In this video, we are going to have a look at solving a system of linear equations. And what these questions typically look like is we get three equations where we need to solve for the three unknowns. Now, we're probably familiar with solving two equations with two unknowns using simultaneous equations, but now if we have three equations and three unknowns, we either need to use our calculator or a technique called row reduction. So that's how we're going to solve for our three unknowns here. So what we want to do is we want to have our three equations lined up on top of each other with our x's, our y's and our z's and our constants on the other side of the equal sign. And next we want to put this into an augmented matrix form. Now what that looks like is a matrix, so we can draw our matrix, and the coefficients of our terms of our top row, which will be 1, 4, 11, we put those in and then we put this vertical line here and we put our constant 7. Now we're going to do that for each of the rows. So 1, 6, 17 and 9 and then 1, 4, 8 and 4. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and use row reduction to change this matrix such that our final matrix has a triangle of zeros here. We want all of these to be zeros, a zero, a zero, and a zero. And the reason why we want to do that is because if these become zeros, on our bottom line, we're essentially going to have eight, the coefficient of z. Now this probably won't be an eight by the end of our manipulation of our equations here, but it'll be something multiplied by z equals something. And we can solve for z, and therefore help us solve for y, which helps us solve for x. So we can work backwards and solve all of the unknowns. So that's going to be our goal. Okay, so let's use row reduction. What we're going to do is we're going to firstly make a change to uh, row two, because we want to get this term to be zero first. And then I'll work down and I'll get these two to be zero. Now what we can do is we can create a new row two by taking row two, and subtracting row 1, because if we have this 1 minus the 1, we will get 0. We will have to do that for every term though. So row 2 minus row 1 will give us our new row 2. So let's draw in our new row 2. So row 1 will be the same. It'll be 1, 4, 11, and 7. And then our new row 2 will be 1 minus 1. 6 minus 4, 17 minus 11, and 9 minus 7. And then we can just write our third row. Now, if you are skilled at this, you might be able to do a few of these manipulations in the one step, but I'll just, I'll put all of the steps for now. Okay, so we've got one of them down. Now, I want to get these two to be 0, and hopefully we can spot that this one's going to be quite nice, in that if we change row 3 to be row 3 minus row 1 or row 1 minus row 3, we're going to create some zeros here. Now I'm going to choose row 1 minus row 3 because I'm going to get positive values for these last two terms. So I'm going to say row 1 minus row 3, this will be our new row 3. Okay, so let's draw our matrix in. So row 1 stays the same, row 2 stays the same, now our new row 3 will be row 1 minus row th 3, so 1 minus 1 is 0, 4 minus 4 is 0, 11 minus 8 is 3, and 7 minus 4 is 3. Okay, now we have a triangle of zeros here, which is, which is what we wanted, and we know this is now our final step, so we can actually start solving for our unknowns. Because this bottom line tells us that well, 0x plus 0y plus 3z should equal 3. So 3z will equal 3, and therefore z is equal to 1. So we solve for z. Now we use the, the second equation. So 0x plus 2y. So 2y plus 6z should be equal to 2. Now we know z, so 2y plus 6 times 1 
is equal to 2. So therefore, 2y is equal to negative 4. And y will be equal to negative 2. And now that we know z and y, let's go back to our top equation. We're going to have 1x, so x plus 4y plus 11z is equal to 7. Now let's substitute in everything that we know. So x plus 4 times y, which is negative 2, plus 11 times 1 will equal 7. Now this will be negative 8 plus 11, which is 3, and we'll take that over. So 7 minus 3 is 4. So that's it. We've solved for x, y, and z using row reduction. Now just before I finish up here, I did want to show you one quick thing. Let's get my diagram here. Okay, so this is just an example of what our end matrix should look like if we have a triangle of zeros here. And there's going to be a few, uh, there's, a few there's a three different scenarios where we're either going to get unique solutions or no solutions or an infinite number of solutions. And I just want to point them out because in IB questions, they often ask uh, to comment on the, the type of solutions we're going to get. Okay, so these all these letters here are just going to be uh, are just going to be some sort of number value. Now, h multiplied by z will equal i, where h and i are just numbers. Now, if h is not zero, if h is not zero, so it's some number, we are going to get a value for z because if this is any number, we can just divide it underneath the i doesn't matter what i is, we're going to get some value for z. So if h isn't zero, we're going to get a unique solution. So let's go unique, unique solution. Because we'll get a value for z, and therefore we can get a solution for y and a solution for x. So a unique set of solutions. So that's going to be the first type of question. The second one is, if h is 0 and i is not 0, so if this is 0 but i is not 0, let's think about what will happen here for z. We're going to get some value for i, which isn't 0, but then we're going to be dividing that by 0 when we, when we bring the h underneath. And that doesn't, that's not going to give us a, uh, an answer because we can't divide by zero. It's not going to give us a real solution. So if this is the case where this is zero but this isn't, we're going to get no solution to our system of equations. So this will be no solution. And the final one is if h is zero and i is zero. So what we're going to get there is zero times z will equal zero. Now that means that z could have been anything because 0 times 4 is 0, 0 times 10 is 0, 0 times a million is 0. So z could be an infinite amount of things. So if we get, if we have h is 0 and i is 0, if both of these two terms are 0, we're going to get an infinite number of solutions. So an infinite, infinite number of solutions. So these are the three ones you want to look out for. Uh, after you've done your row reduction, uh, just have a look at what the H and the I are, these last two numbers, and you can make some, you can draw some sort of conclusion uh, out of what they are, out of these three possibilities. Okay, I recommend practicing a few of these questions, so good luck.